strippers you put out here and they still work every day, same as anybody else. They probably work harder than any of you do for your paycheck every day. Doesn't change a darn thing. I'm financially independent. I go out and I work every day, 20 hours a day. Whether I get paid or not, isn't gonna change my life one bit. I go to the casino and I gamble. Whether I make money or I lose money isn't gonna change my, my day one bit. I'm still gonna eat, sleep, and teach. So it's just a lot of numbers that sit out here in cyberspace. In the entire year, I bet you you don't carry 1% of your actual cash in your pocket that you are in possession of in any given year. <coughs> and all the rest of it is a bunch of numbers that float around between banks and credit unions and, and MasterCard and paying bills and buying food and all. it's all done with a magnetic strip. It's just a bunch of numbers that floats around out there. And that's the same thing with Rothschild. It's just all electronic numbers that go here and there. It's bookkeeping. But he's not using it for good. How do you know? You don't know. That's just it. You're told one thing. Some of it is good. Some of it is evil. So much of some of it goes to scientific projects. You know, the, all your military governments worldwide have black ops, which they don't account. There's no accountability. Just like the movie Charlie uh, Wilson's War. Some of you have seen the movie with Tom Hanks. Good movie. It's a true story, too, by the way. Misappropriations, <laughs> it's called. And they use, and that's how the Afghans defeated the Russians. And never once was there any implication that we were involved with it, because it all happens behind the scenes. There's a whole world of things that happen out here that we don't know about. No more than you know about what goes on inside your own body or how your brain works or how all your organisms in your body keep you alive every day. You don't sit there and worry about it at night. It just is. We're only, we're only the sum of our knowledge that we can actually put our finger on and we only can talk one word at a time. We can't absorb all the knowledge in the world simultaneously. In my, me, I'm a guy, you ask me a question and I'll download like a computer. Same thing with that computer there. You ask it a question, it'll give you an answer. And if that computer doesn't have its capacity, you'll log onto the internet and I'll go out and get the answer for you. Or you can go down, before I had computers, I had to go down to the Milwaukee Public Library and sit there 40 hours a week reading books, the old fashioned way, do research. And then when the computers came out, it, exponentialized my ability to learn because it, it gave me information instantly. And it wasn't that I was reading black and white, and if I didn't have enough light, my eye couldn't, couldn't read as fast as an illuminated screen that could scroll down. I didn't have to turn pages. It, it read at the speed I could comprehend things at. And you get faster and faster and faster, and the smarter you get, the faster you get. And then you learn about endorphins and how to make your mind not work at 10%, but 20% or 30%. And you become a, you, you become a, a computer yourself, of being able to absorb information at an exponential level. And you get smarter and smarter as you get older. But then we all live in the bell curve. We start with diapers. We end in diapers. <laughs> right? So we're only, we, we, we hit our peak at about 40. And then after that, some of us are, are good up to about 60, but then after that, we start losing a little bit every day. Like they say, the first thing to go is the brain. <laughs> question. Oh, my question's um, more of an invitation, really. Um, I've got a few stamps here. I've oh yeah, he's got, he's got the uh, navigator stamps. He's got about two, three hundred of them over here. If anybody wants navigator stamps. If anyone wants to see what they look like, because there's been a lot of talk about these, these stamps. He's got all kinds of dollar stamps with the gold seals on. He collects them. So if anybody wants to buy stamps from him, he's the guy to see. Oh. And if you're, a coin, if you're a stamp collector, you know anything about this? If you've got full sheets that are virtually like this, they're worth a lot more than independent stamps. And stamps are really good value. 
especially gold stamps. These kind of things like this here are uh, collector's items. You can put them away and when you're 65 years old, you can go out and sell them on eBay. That's the unique thing about today is your, uh, is the eBay opens the entire world to you for advertising. So if you guys need stamps, this guy will sell them to you. And a lot cheaper than you'll get them on eBay. Those would be for gold certified documents if you have something like that that you want to do. In other words, claims of the life we use the red fox stamps on because of the, uh, because those are your life documents. Uh, I use the red fox stamps for federal lawsuits that I file and I only put one on the original that goes into the file. All everybody else gets the Rockefeller stamp which is the Federal Reserve and those are copies but I still pay for the, the value of sending them out to the individuals. But the one that's held in the courthouse has the gold stamp. Now, to break the continuance of evidence of the value of this, what the governments are doing is photocopying them and then destroying the paper so that there's no paper record and they just keep it on video. So if it ever comes down to show us the evidence, oh, the tape got erased, or the file got deleted, so they can cover up the lie, because this technology exposes all the lies they're doing. So you always make two originals, one for yourself and one for the court. Okay? With the gold stamp. Yeah, I always do backups. Yes? Um, you say the courts and everything, they're trying to cover up all that sort of side of things, but one day there's gonna be a shift when everyone's going to be using this language. How far into the future do you see that? I see a 2012, April 6, 2012. That's two years from now. And I see that it's going to be a nine-month sh transition shift, and on 12-21-2012, it'll be official globally. And based on the fact that in 10 years, I've gone from a website where I was just getting a few hundred hits a day to... Uh, 40 to 50,000 new people every day and 400 million people on my website right now. By 2012, I should have 51% of the world's population that have knowledge and have a voting capacity to, to vote in with knowledge syntax, the correct syntax, and governments will have to change. And I've made this statement at all the seminars, and I think the government is hearing me because of the amount of activity that's taking place an amount of military personnel, all new military personnel. I'm constantly getting hits from military organizations, judicial sites, uh, where the courthouses, universities. Uh, when I was over in Auckland, I did two presentations at the University of uh, uh, the Maury University for all the deans. And then one of the deans stood up and said, but can we trust that you just told us the truth? And six of the other deans had been studying my technology for over two years and said, we've tried to defeat it. It is what it is a truthful statement that he's just showed us today, and we will endorse and assist the rest of you deans in understanding this at the Maury University. So they want to bring in the syntax and teach it to all Maury's that go to the Maury University. Because you know that's the only way they're going to defeat a fiction which has invaded their country for 173 years. And then, April, 12, uh, April 20, Oh, there's two, there's two dates. 4-6-2012 is the Mayans, and 12-21-2012 is the Egyptians. And they both claim that that's the end. And Pandora is destroyer of worlds. Destroyer is a pronoun, of is an adverb, modifies the verb world. I destroy the verb world. This technology destroys the verb world. Yeah. So we're getting sort of towards the end of the day. And people have gone through a lot this weekend with the, with the technology and looking at what's what. And it would be good to be able to have a conversation of, about what a change would maybe look like and what sort of structures may be in place as, as far as the community of people is concerned. Some of the things that I've been talking to people about or ideas that I've, that I've had uh, and, and I tell you right now that none of my ideas are original. Uh, everything that I have comes from others, other sources. Mm -hmm. 